On this episode of Young Guns TV, we get the opportunity to pursue one of the most elusive and athletic animals in the Rocky Mountains, bighorn sheep. These animals have incredible eyesight and inhabit some of the highest elevations in Wyoming, making this no easy task. So come along on this exciting adventure. My name is Hayden Bronnenberg, and on this season, I get the opportunity to bring you guys along as we chase after some of North America's most elusive animals. So get ready, it's going to be a good one. Look at the target you're building now. Yeah, yeah. Joining us on this hunt is one of my dad's lifelong friends, Andy Childers. Not only is Andy helping us out with the hunt, but he also built these very rifles that we're shooting. They're his own brand of rifles called Cat Daddy Custom Rifles, and we're shooting them here at about a thousand yards. Now, of course, we wouldn't hunt the animals at this distance. This is just for practice. But shooting at this distance makes those closer shots seem a lot easier. Not only is Andy providing us with a rifle, He's also providing us with a few horses to help us get into the high country. It took a full day to get in and get set up, but well worth it when we started seeing sheep on the rims above us. Unfortunately, the season doesn't start until tomorrow though, so we're just looking for now. You know you're off the beaten path when an elk bugle is your alarm clock in the morning. At first light, we make our way up the ridge above our camp to give us a better view of the entire basin. Glassing for sheep is a long and slow process, picking apart all the rugged country piece by piece. And this basin that we're in is abundant with wildlife. From elk herds with massive bulls, and packs of wolves hunting gophers. We glassed all day, but in the end, had to go back to the camp before dark 
without laying eyes on a sheep. That wow can only mean one thing, a big ram came into the basin. However, unfortunately, they dumped in on the complete other side of the basin. So all we can do for now is sit and watch until they stop moving. Fortunately for us, it looks like they've been spooked and they're heading in our direction. They can be right in here this afternoon. Hopefully they spook and go high. We sit back and watch the sheep as they work their way into the timber. I got excited when they started running towards us. <laughs> and apparently they kept moving in the timber because it's not long till they pop out right below us. And there's a big mature ram right in the middle of them. He's heavy. We decide to move further up the ridge to see if we can find a way to get in closer. Yeah, he's broomed on this left side. We get to the top of the ridge and set up, but the shot's just too far. So we back off with the hopes that we can get on him in the morning. So at this point, you may be wondering what we're looking for in a bighorn sheep. With this being a near once in a lifetime opportunity, we want to make sure that we harvest a mature ram. The main thing that my dad was looking for in a bighorn sheep was something called broom. Oftentimes, mature rams will rub the ends of their horns on rocks to keep them from impairing their vision. Even though the broom causes you to lose a little bit of length, typically broomed off rams are a little heavier and have a little bit more character, which is what we're looking for. The next morning, we head up the same ridge to see if we can find the rams from the day before. Unfortunately, all that we can find is a group of ewes. We head back down, saddle up the horses, and ride to a new location. My dad and I glass this new basin while Andy stays back and keeps an eye out for the rams from the day before. See, I think this one's easier to cross than the one that, the one over there. Maybe, maybe I don't know, right there in the middle. The top's more gradual than the one over there. I think you could hop in that saddle. Get you across the way around there. Yeah. Uh, maybe not right off the backside of this, but. Well, if we see one over there and we'll shoot it, well, I guess we'll find out. Yeah, I guess so. We hunt the basin for four more days, but the only sheep to be found is that large group of ewes that we spotted on the third day. So we decide to pack up and head out. Pigtail. And the live line. And you drop the tail. Okay. And just throw a half hitch over the top of that. That's all you need. Okay.
Andy and my dad keep at it. They check spots I've seen sheep in in years past, hoping to turn up a mature ram. And one day while I'm up on a ridge elk hunting, I get a call that they've done just that. They turned up a mature ram, and the next day, we set out to go after it. We don't have to walk far until a group of rams pops out right around the corner. Can you tell? I'm talking far right, he's looking back to the left, right? Right. Can you tell how big he is? I think he's got some lamb tips. You can just see his head, right? You can see his body. He's not very big. I don't see a big one. It was a group of all young rams, so we passed on them and kept heading in the direction of the mature ram that they had seen the day before. this wind, the sheep can be tucked away anywhere. So we take our time looking at every nook and cranny, trying to spot the sheep before they spot us. We check basin to basin through most of the morning and into the afternoon. And finally, around two o'clock in the afternoon, we peek over a rim to see some sheep grazing in the basin below. Yeah, I think he's bigger. I think he's heavier. One with his back to us, looking down away from us. Yeah, I like him more. Okay, I'm dialed to 4.75. Which one are you looking at? I'm looking at the second one from the right. Okay. You ready, Hayden? Yeah, I'm on him. I think this is our 15th day and our 44th round. Oh, that's awesome. Broken. I just looked through him. I'm pretty sure he's the biggest. That's a stud. Yeah, good choice there. Oh, he's just so much heavier than the rest. Glad you came, buddy. Yeah, that is <laughs> awesome. We walked up and said, God, those are way bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I thought they were about as big as you, man. <laughs> it looks like maybe like if we ease down here and then cut around below those rocks, maybe. I think we have to stay pretty close between those rocks. rocks. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking between those rocks and then head for above that timber patch. Hit that saddle right above that timber patch and just choop. There you go. All that practice that Andy and my dad did in the summer paid off. 
he was able to make a perfect 475 yard shot on this beautiful bighorn sheep. 7.8 miles. Not to mention all of the endurance training that went into this hunt. If you didn't notice, my dad's rocking a knee brace, so he's getting knee replacement this February. But he's still able to tough it out on this five mile sheep pack out. <laughs>